the Lake Marina Campground. Beautiful day today. Uh, winter Solstice 2012. That's 12, 21, 12. The big day from the uh, Mayan calendar when the new cycle begins. So it's a super celebration. And uh, tell a little story about my past. Well, here we are. December 21st, 2012. The end of several cycles. Big one being, of course, the Mayan prediction. And I'm out here in uh, beautiful Lake Marino, um, near Campo, California, which is about 10 miles from the Mexican border. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, here's the uh, lake behind me there. You can sort of see it. <laughs> it's definitely uh, fall here, been fall here. No leaves on the trees, but uh, it's nice out. It's probably about 63 degrees. And we got Wookie with me. There's Wookie. Let's do something with Wookie there. Here I am. Wookie, what you doing? Here she is. <laughs> Being a good little watchdog, aren't you? You know, the park rules are uh, that you have to be on a leash, you know. You know that? I know. We're both kind of on the edge of criminality over here. Videoing myself. There's Wookie. Hey, say hello to the camera, Wookie. Say hello to the camera. <laughs> there she is. Oh, okay, get her daily scratch. Anywho, <laughs> trying to do two cameras here. Could work, actually. Might work pretty good. Anyway, I thought this would be an appropriate time to do a video blog on now. how I ended up by at 2012. And the planet didn't blow up, nothing happened. That I didn't ever think what happened, uh, actually, but all started for me shortly after I got out of Scientology back in 83, came up here, or came up, not here, but to Portland, Oregon. I'd spent the last 25 years there, just moved down here last year, but um, 83 was a big year for me, I escaped from the Scientology cult and made it up to Portland and uh, oddly about 10 years went by before I ever ran into another Scientologist which was fine with me at the time. <laughs> now I'm over it but man, it was Scientology was good for me for a metaphysical Marines I guess. That's the way I look at it. Anyway, uh, I first I heard about the Mayan stuff, of course, was with uh, Jose Arguelles in uh, 1987. He put out a book, a uh, famous book, uh, called The Mayan Factor, which sort of got everything rolling in terms of not only the Mayan, the Mayan prophecies of the uh, Mayan calendar, but the whole harmonic convergence thing started with Jose Arguelles. And uh, I remember in 87, uh, we had, I was with my partner and wife at the time, uh, Didi, and we had a whole bunch of crystals that we got from our friend Dharma Bob, who would take usual, uh, regular trips, regular trips to uh, Thailand and Europe. Hi, Mr. Ranger. And, uh, so bring back a bunch, and so we took about, oh gee, I don't know, 200 uh, quartz crystals up to the Mount Hood Wilderness, about 50 miles east of Portland, on this beautiful night. It was the night of the Harmonic Convergence in 1987, as you may recall. I can't remember the 
date. I think it was August something, into August, August 17th, I think. Anyway, we planted those suckers in the ground. There was uh, me and Dee Dee and her daughter and our friend and, their, and her two children. We spent the night up, up there, camped, and the star, it was a new moon, or at least the moon wasn't up, because I remember the stars were incredible. But, uh, so that kind of launched us off. We ended up getting, uh, there was a board game that went along with the, uh, with the book, and uh, so we were trying to play that. It was extremely complicated, as I recall, and we had our, we were just really into it. So, uh, and we hooked up with the uh, local Mayan folk people too. Uh, there was a huge contingent in Portland. Jeez, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred, a couple hundred uh, Mayan calendar nerds, <laughs> which is what we were. Uh, so. Time went on, we developed a very interesting relationship with some people. I went to a couple of events, saw Jose Arguelles uh, speak in person, I think it was about 1989 or 90. And uh, then it sort of faded out until about 1996, uh, 95, I discovered the internet. And uh, 96, I heard of Terrence McKenna, the uh, psychedelic successor, in my opinion, to Timothy Leary, uh, who had come up with an interesting uh, theory uh, that he called Time Wave Zero. And he developed a computer program where you could run uh, the program and it would show you the progression of increasing novelty. He had two, he had a dichotomy of habit and novelty. So if things get into a traditional pattern or, or establish a pattern, that's habit. But if something comes in to interrupt the pattern, that's novelty. And so he figured out a way to uh, map novelty by using the I Ching. And what he would do is he ran the I Ching hexagrams through a computer program that just kept uh, quickly changing you know, mapping the changes as the, as the hexagrams went by, you know, really quickly. And then he figured out that by using that, he could compare it against history. He came up with a graph. <laughs> he could compare it against history. And uh, it fit. So that if, you, if he used December 21st, 2012, as the end, and he put the, at the maximum novelty, is what he decided it was, and then put that against history, it matched up all the way back, and novelty being the point where there was new breakthroughs or new inventions, and habit being where there was a lot of uh, tradition, a lot of habitual behaviors, and, and so the graph kind of basically went like this, as it, descending into novelty. So. So I really got into that. I thought that was a great concept. And he believed, and I think rightly so, it was a unique take and something that was kind of missed by science. Although many people have said that uh, nature's whole thrust is toward novelty, is toward the unique. You know, you can look at anything and it looks like it's gotten more complicated as it evolves. He made the point that you know, first you start out with, uh, you know, the Big Bang, where everything's simple, you know, it's light, dark, boom, atoms, you know, and then eventually everything, you know, develops faster and faster until you end up at the maximum point of novelty where everything is the most complicated or complex with humans and, you know, that whole map of humanity. And so, uh, anyway, uh, so I had my own thoughts on it, but and then since then, I think that was 1996, and so and I heard him a couple times on Art Bell. You might want to look it up; it's on the internet. He's been a, Art Bell was a big fan of Terence McKenna, um, but Terence McKenna was also is a big leader in the um, uh, psychedelic um, entheon um, 
movement, of which I've had some experience in the past. But uh, anyway, he uh, Terrence McKenna passed away, I think, in 2010, I think. But he left this legacy of uh, the time wave zero and, uh, you know, the uh, his belief in this book called Food of the Gods that uh, the ingestion of mushrooms was responsible for the development of language in humans because uh, psychedelics, uh, specifically psilocybin, uh, uh, language centers of the brain. So, anyway. so then, uh, you know, I, his point was that it could be true, although you know, he, there was some discussion about this, but it could be true that December 21st, uh, 2012, at noon, which was about an hour ago, um, the, uh, the world of the universe would uh, reach maximum novelty. And so and after that point, then uh, there was a discussion as to well, what would that look like or how would people be, you know, and how would that, how would that uh, happen, you know? And so all that speculation was uh, brought out in terms of, you know, the, the obvious thing to go to. It's end of a calendar. Then it's a time for a catastrophe. You know, the apocalyptic um, uh, view of the end of the world. You know, which is, you know, throughout human history, it's, it's a huge subject, you know, it's called, in fact, there's a word for it, it's called eschatology, the study of end times. And so uh, I kind of made a study of it myself, and and, and uh, everything from, you know, the planet blowing up, you know, there's uh, another really cool, I can't remember who came up with it, or the cool theory, which I thought was, was great, was that at that time, uh, the sun would uh, blast out um, uh, a... Uh, huge ejection of, of solar material at the exact moment that the planet lines up precisely with the galactic center, which is right now. So over the next three days, it's as exact as it's ever going to get, ever, you know, in the 26,000 years. So, and that's right now. So, I think I can feel it. <laughs> anyway, the... Uh, uh, and so, and as a result of this solar ejection, at the same time as the exact lining up of everything, including, you know, there's also planets lined up, and everything's lined up right now, then uh, it, would, it would trigger a, a, a huge discharge of DMT into the human brain on a mass basis, and everybody for about 10 minutes would go into this DMT trip. And... Uh, DMT, of course, is extremely powerful psychedelic. The, the brain makes it, but you, but in tiny, tiny amounts. But if you take, you know, psychedelics such as ayahuasca or, uh, you know, some forms of, you know, heavy LSD trip, any of that produces DMT in the brain, and so uh, uh, and it causes a psychedelic experience. So he figured. So this person, whoever came up with this idea, I can't remember who it is. I'll remember in a second. Uh, has figured that well then everybody's going to have this DMT trip for 10 minutes and it will transform humanity you know <laughs> so who knows maybe we're on the trip right now I, I kind of feel psychedelic right now just talking about it uh, anyway uh, so the uh, um, I finally started coming down to the fact that i you know, look, it's a, it's a calendar, and it's an end of a cycle. It's an end of lots of big cycles. And so I ended up with deciding that probably, I don't know, pretty recently, maybe a couple of years ago, that what it really meant was we have a choice. Um, it's like um, a train's going by, and you know what time it's coming by. There's two trains. One's headed toward the Oblivion Express, or, or we call it the Oblivion Express, and the other one is called the Train to Heaven. And the trains come by simultaneously, and they arrive at uh, noon on December 12th, uh, 2012. So, um, 
or December 21st, 2012. And so you can make a choice which train you want to get on, you know. And so I, I think, you know, if you take the train to heaven, then you have everything, all the universe is now going on to this new cycle, and it's a way to just say goodbye to the old, bypassed, just to the old way you were, and welcome to the new person, the new way to be. And so, um, and I, I stuck with that, and I think that's a, that's a that's a good way of looking at it. You know, it's like you know, a, a, you know, humans have a calendar year, ends on December thirty first. You know, and everybody gets their New Year's resolutions. Well, this is like a, a new eon resolution to be in the light, to be love, to give love, to accept love, to be love, and. So that everyone who can make that choice has the universe behind them. And I think the universe is always behind anybody who decides to be love or light. But this is like an in time thing, you know, so the forces of time and the forces of nature um, are also tracking in that same way. So. And I and I've seen and I see this too. Um, you know, people who you know decide to be negative just get more and more negative. You know, a person who decides to be positive just gets more and more positive. You know, I mean, happiness is a choice, and that's actually scientifically proven. You make a choice to be happy. You make a choice to be sad. Um, and and really, you know, what does it take to be happy? A choice. Same thing with uh, light or dark, you know, uh, glass half full, glass half empty, you know, I mean, it's, the, we, all, we know all this, but the big struggle is just with the ego who would pre prefer the drama, who would prefer the negativity. Not that that's bad, but uh, the, the, the ego has that tendency to focus in on that which separates person. And if we didn't have egos, then we wouldn't be separated. And because when you put away the ego, then we find a huge, um, an intense um, ability to connect with others. And, um, and so uh, I think the experience of the ego down through the millennium and down through all of human history should teach us that we can choose. Uh, and, that, and that's the bottom line. You have a choice. So that's what this day is all about. It's a choice. It's a choice to be who you are, which is basic love. And, and so in honor of that truth, and in honor of this lovely day, honor of nature and all the people who believe in it, who are part of it. Uh, and that's why I did this video, but I'll probably heavily editing it. <laughs> Lake Marino, California, signing off. Bye-bye. Okay, well, it's been a lovely day for December 21st, 2012. You know, oddly, for some reason today, I had a memory of when I was about 14 years old. And I was thinking, I remember the train of thought, I said, let's see, what year would I be 60? And uh, keep in mind, this is 19, let's see, 66. So I had to add it up and came to the conclusion, oh, it'll be 2012. 
Remember back then, boy, that seemed like forever. <laughs> Looking back, it seemed like forever too. Anyway, uh, I had a, I brought the I Ching book along with me, and uh, I did a three coin toss to. Um, with the question in mind, what does this you know, shift really mean, or or does it mean anything, or what is the significance of all this? And uh, very interesting, <laughs> of course, because the I Ching is brutally meaningful. <laughs> the uh, I got hexagram number fifty-six called the Wanderer. And the thing I love about uh, oracles in general is that they answer you on several different levels. And uh, this one is no different. Um, because here I get the hexagram of the Wanderer. I basically just headed out on I, I Interstate 8. Saw a sign for this place, and I uh, was losing daylight. I didn't really want to be driving around at night looking for some place to park this thing. Uh, I originally was going to go out to Anso Borrego Desert, which is another 50 miles from here. And I didn't really want to spend the time doing that. And I thought, well, this looks fun. So <laughs> I wandered in here and uh, it turned out to be a great little place. So there's only three other campers here, so it's a bit nice. Anyway, the I Ching says... Uh, uh, the Wanderer, success through smallness. Perseverance brings good fortune to the Wanderer. Uh, and then the image is the fire on the mountain. And this is very interesting. The image of the Wanderer. Thus the, sus the superior man is clear-minded and cautious in, Im in imposing penalties and protracting no lawsuits. <laughs> So, you know, a, a, a person who's a wanderer is always a stranger in, in where, wherever he goes, because he's wandering, he's never been there before. And that, to me, is so symbolic of the human condition. Every moment that we live is really a new moment, and it's only in our imaginations that the moments are the same. <laughs> in fact, if you if we go back to Terrence McKenna's uh, uh, overarching intent of nature is to have novelty, then to the degree that uh, you resist change or resist the novelty is the degree that your life becomes difficult. And in this hexagram, uh, I there was a changing line. There's a changing line of uh, uh, nine in the third place. And I'll read this, it's very interesting. Nine in the third place. The wanderer's inn burns down. He loses the steadfastness of his young servant. Danger. And earlier today, uh, the rangers have been driving back and forth. There's, you know, there's like eight rangers here, and there's three people camping, but <laughs> so they don't have much to do. And they noticed I, Wiki, Wiki was just sitting outside uh, the RV, just being a watchdog, just sitting there. Wasn't bothering anybody or going anywhere, but uh, the rangers pulled up and said, Oh, we need to have you put the leash on the dog. And uh, so, uh, you know, that's fine. I know that's the rule. I saw the signs, but I thought, well, there's nobody here, you know. I, I'm, uh, I'm sort of abusing my privilege of being a guest. And uh, so in this uh, uh, judgment here on, in the I Ching, he's talking about um, the wanderer is not respecting the local laws or respecting the rules. And so as a result, you know, he could get kicked out. Uh, so, you know, the end burns down. And uh, so that's the my, mac, mac, microcosm in this situation today with me personally. But in the larger scheme of things, um, 
isn't that so true of the ego? The ego is like um, uh, the uh, the end in, in one respect, and we are the wanderers as spiritual beings. We come into this body, and uh, uh, just for an instant of time, and that body. Uh, serves us as we go through our wanderingnesses through life. And yet, if we don't respect the body, it burns down. If we don't respect nature's imperative to change, then uh, we, lose our, our, uh, we lose our ability to be happy. We, learn our, we lose our ability to be our essential selves, which is love, uh, joy, bliss, it's, these are natural conditions, but uh, if we disrespect the local laws of incarnation, then uh, through being overly egocentric, then we can lose that incarnation, basically, is what they're talking about. But here's the key thing, is that um, the hexagram changes from wanderer to, by virtue and via that changing line, into... Uh, hexagram number 35, which is progress, which is interesting. So, the wanderer, having had his end burned down, now must wander on out into the world and uh, expand his uh, view and with newfound respect for the rules and the uh, uh, proper way of doing things. And so, uh, as a result, he becomes more humble. And uh, uh, as he comes into his new abode, or his new area, he has much more respect. And so the local authorities uh, take him under uh, their wing. They say, there's a man who has learned something and uh, looks very wise. And so, uh, because he has a, a humble nature, he's uh, taken in and... Uh, enjoyed by the people who are the um, uh, leaders or the kings, quote, quote, of the new realm that he's just entered. And so, and so again, that's so true of not only what happened with me today, because I said, okay, uh, great, that, that's fine. I'll hook, hook you back up to the leash. We went out for a walk and, uh, uh, went down to the lake, and then Wookie, uh, Wookie had a great time chasing rabbits as <laughs> it ended up being with me on the leash. Uh, anyway, uh, and I had come back and uh, gained new insight as to where I was coming from on uh, my trip by doing the I Ching. So I had I, uh, I gained that progress, or made progress. So and just uh, accordingly, human beings, as they have gone through this giant 26,000 year cycle, have developed and come to a point where they realize that you must respect the laws of nature. You have to be true to your true with to your own nature. And when you do that, then progress is made. Evolution takes a leap. And I believe that's what this shift is all about. It's a leap in evolution. And although we are centering in on this particular one day, uh, December 21st, 2012, this is really something that has been going on for a couple, at least a generation or two. And some would say it's, it's an ongoing uh, pro uh, process. But... Again, if we go back to Terence McKenna and even Art Bell, when he wrote a book called The Quickening, uh, they were talking about, I was listening to the interview again last night from 1997, and uh, they uh, were in hearty agreement to the fact that human consciousness is expanding and that people are, and, and events in the world are speeding up. And in fact, I remember back then there were some uh, an article written in Scientific American that had stuck in my mind. Not that I read that all the time, but it, I just it just caught my eye one day, uh, and uh, was that uh, uh, literally time was speeding up. 
<laughs> that was uh, that was the conclusion of all these physicists uh, that had been meeting uh, in great earnest uh, to uh, try to figure out what was going on with the measurements they were taking. So uh, uh, this quickening is was McKenna's uh, additional anecdotal proof that um, uh, time was requiring greater and greater novelty uh, in order to continue to go forward. And so this, uh, this little reading here I've done with this uh, goes right along with that same idea. We, uh, as we wander through the land, and through more and more lands, we gain more and more experience, and this experience um, gives us greater and greater respect for the process of life, and then uh, so we make greater evolutionary progress. So, so that's what happened with the I Ching. I love this thing. Here's to 2012.